Hello Physiology Lab students, welcome to our online urinalysis lab. In order to complete this lab, you'll need to prepare some materials. Firstly, I suggest you get a working space and coat it with an absorbent material, such as a puppy pad or a newspaper, because pee can get everywhere. Secondly, you'll need one of the five beverages choices that I assigned you last week, and these include 500 mils of distilled water, 500 mils of distilled water plus one half teaspoon salt, 500 mils of distilled water plus one half teaspoon baking soda, a caffeinated beverage equivalent to 500 mils. So this one right here, you can notice is about 473 mils. So it's shy just by about 25 mils. So in that case, you are going to measure out about 25 mils of fluid and then pour that into an extra glass so that this person will be drinking the equivalent amount of 500 milliliters and an alcoholic beverage and an equivalent amount of water to add up to 500 mils. So this beer bottle contains 12 ounces of beer. There's about 30 milliliters in an ounce. So this adds up to about 360 milliliters. So what we need now is about 140 milliliters more in order to add up to 500 mils. So I get out a glass and I add the equivalent using my measuring cup. It's very important that everybody here is drinking the same quantity of fluid so that our results will be comparable. You will also need a measuring cup, something that hopefully measures in milliliters. If you don't have anything that measures in milliliters, if it measures in ounces, that's fine. Just take 30 and multiply it by the ounces. Next, you will need three urinalysis test strips and accompanying color chart. You will also need the data entry table from page 195 of your lab manual. And finally, you will need a specimen of freshly voided urine. Oh, one second. There you go, fresh urine. All right, now we're ready to begin. Once you have your initial urine sample, go ahead and set that aside because we're gonna analyze that in just a few minutes. Your first job today, once you get it set up, is to consume your assigned beverage. So if you're assigned distilled water, you simply drink the 500 mils of distilled water in under 10 minutes. On the other hand, if you were just assigned distilled water, let's say baking soda, let's talk about how that's gonna go. So you could just add your one half teaspoon of baking soda directly to your water that's gonna be pretty nasty to drink and drinking that whole thing in 10 minutes is not gonna be very fun. So my suggestion is go ahead and get your half teaspoon of baking soda, add it there, take a small quantity of that water, swish it around, and then bottoms up. After that, you can complete drinking your, the remainder of the 500 mils of water, and that's gonna taste pretty good compared to the really nasty baking soda water. So that's how I would suggest doing that. Okay, for the salt water, we're gonna do the same thing. Instead of diluting one half teaspoon of salt in this 500 mils of water, I would again suggest taking a small quantity of water, adding the salt, drinking that, it's gonna be pretty nasty, uh, and then you can wash it down with the remaining 500 mils of water. So once you have consumed your beverage, it's time to start a clock for 30 minutes. This timer will tell us when our 30 minutes are up because that's when we have to urinate again. By then, whatever we've consumed should start to have an effect on our urine volume and chemistry. While we wait, we're gonna use this time to analyze our initial urine sample. Next, we wanna measure the volume of our urine that we collected for our first sample. So simply take your urine sample and pour it into the measuring cup. I realize your measuring cups may not have very fine gradations, but do your best in analyzing and trying to figure out what the proper uh, volume is of urine. So I can see it doesn't quite go up to the 100 mil line, so I'm gonna guess it's about 70 or 80 mils. And I'm gonna write that in my lab manual down here at time zero, the volume of urine that was urinated. So once you've successfully measured your urine, we then wanna use one of our urinalysis test strips to measure the chemistry of that urine. So simply take out one test strip and then place it into the urine and make sure that all the pads are equally covered with urine. Then you wanna take it out and set it aside, letting it dry uh, in a perpendicular fashion so that excess urine can come off. After you've done that, you can set your urine aside and then we're gonna compare it to the color chart that I sent you in the mail. My color chart is located on the back of the bottle. Now realize this color chart has to be read within one to two minutes, otherwise the values are no longer applicable. So let's compare to the color chart here. Firstly, I need to orient my strip to make sure I'm reading the right direction. So here I'm looking for a white pad on the end and that will help me orient right now so that that's my compensation panel and everything else on my test strip 
should, should uh, line up with the uh, color code key on the bottle. So first let's go from the bottom. You can see that ascorbic acid looks like I have a 10 there, so I'll mark that down. Next is leukocytes. This would be abnormal to have in urine, but it sometimes happens in females or people with urinary tract infections. You can see that I might have a trace of leukocytes in this urine. This is actually synthetic urine, by the way. Next is specific gravity. The specific gravity here matches up with 1.000, which is the same specific gravity as normal uh, water. Now I'm gonna look at the pH. Well, this pH thing goes all the way over to here. So it seems like I have a pH of about eight, and that is alkaline, and that is unusual for urine. Normally, urine has a pH of around six. Okay, next I wanna look for my glucose strip. And it seems like this strip actually does show a positive test for glucose. So that would be abnormal as well. Okay, and then next up here, I'm looking at protein. Protein does match up with a trace of protein. That would be unusual. And then I'm gonna look at ketones. Ketones are produced when we metabolize fats. Here we can see that I have a negative ketone test. Same with bilirubin or urobilogen, okay? Maybe negative to a trace. And then bilirubin up top is negative and occult blood, which is hidden blood, that's negative as well. So once you've done this test strip, you wanna record that information in your lab manual under the time zero. So this was our time zero and all that information goes right here. Okay, after that, you probably have another 10 or 15 minutes before it's time to pee. Once you do that, you wanna do the whole process over again. After collecting your second sample, you wanna wait 30 more minutes before collecting your third sample. So this should be taken about an hour after you started the exercise. Again, you're going to record your urine volume. Use your urinalysis test strips to determine the chemistry, specific gravity, and pH. And then you're gonna set a timer for another 30 minutes. So again, your initial urine sample gets recorded here at T0, time zero, the second one at T30, the third one at T60, and the last one at T90. Now I realize that you only have three urinalysis test strips, so you won't have a pH or specific gravity for the last one, but you will have a volume, and that is still very important. So after each urine void, you're gonna record all the information here about specific gravity, volume, and pH in your lab manual. You also wanna transfer that information to the database link that I sent you last week. Now that we've made our urinalysis collections, let's talk a little bit about what these different measurements mean. First of all, the volume of urine tells us how much urine we're expelled from our body. If you expel a lot of urine, it means you're very well hydrated, and it generally means you have plenty of water in the body and that we're not secreting a whole lot of ADH. On the other hand, if you're secreting a little bit of urine, it means you're probably a little bit dehydrated. You'll also notice differences in the color as well. This sample that I'm touching now is a very, very dark yellow, and that indicates a very concentrated urine sample, which should have a higher specific gravity. On the other hand, this urine sample here is very light in color, indicating that the person it came from was rather well hydrated, and they have a very, very dilute urine. So in the person here on my right, that would indicate somebody that has uh, maybe not enough water in their diet, and so they're producing lots of ADH to make sure they can reabsorb as much water as possible and only produce a small quantity of concentrated urine. On this hand, on the other hand, this person would have a very dilute urine because they've consumed enough water in their diet and their ADH secretion would be low.